trying to photograph flying puffins. They are some of the fastest flyers around. And we also have racer bills and guillemots flying around. Now, I'd like to share with you a few tips about what I keep in mind when I'm photographing them. The first thing I like to consider when I'm trying to photograph flying puffins or guillemots or, uh, or racer bills is the location, of course. Now, I'm in Grimsey, North Iceland, millions of birds, but I have to locate myself so I have the wind at my back and uh, it's cloudy, which is perfect because harsh sun is not very good. But if there's sun, I like to keep the sun also at my back. So the location is important because you want the bird to head straight for you and give you a chance to uh, follow and uh, take a side shot. By getting the bird a little bit towards you, you have a little bit more chance to uh, grab the focus and uh, the camera uh, doesn't have as difficult time focusing. When the birds come into the wind, they also fly a little bit slower. Some say that uh, photography is all about location, location, location. In this case, it's probably a little bit true because uh, what you need when you're trying to get flying puffins, they, they fly with uh, maybe 50 kilometers an hour, an hour and uh, you need many chances because you will not have many keepers after a day shooting like this. So uh, I like to keep as a rule to delete as many photos as I can and uh, spend a lot of time browsing the camera before I download them to my computer because understandably nine out of 10 are just out of focus or not very good. Now as for the lens, I'm using a 500 f4 Nikon lens and uh, some of these lenses, Canon, Nikon, Sony, they have a, a focus limiter which means that you can have a setting or a button which limits the focus range of the, of the lens and uh, by doing that I can tell a lens don't try to focus very close to me. So many of these lenses have, uh, have this limiter and uh, when shooting flying puffins that's what you, what you want to use. You put the limits on so the lens is only trying to focus in a distance. Some of these lenses also have uh, image stabilization and uh, well in cases where you're shooting at very uh, fast shutter speeds like over 1000, 1600, 1600 or uh, even up to 1, 3000 something one might say you don't need image stabilization but uh, depending on the lens some of them have a sport mode some of them have just a tripod mode or just one mode you decide for yourself as for me, I tend to use it. I don't have it on a tripod setting, I have it on a normal setting. I don't find it to uh, slow down the lens or slow down the focus, but uh, there are some theories saying that uh, the f camera has more difficult time in focusing if you're using the stabilization. It might be true, but I get enough in focus so I still use the image stabilization. I'd like to hear your uh, opinion on that in the comments. So uh, if you'd like to, just comment on that. And uh, I'd like to hear what you have to say. As for the camera settings, I like to use aperture priority. Sometimes manual, but most of the time I use aperture priority. and. Uh, f-stops from uh, 5.6 maybe and uh, never more than 8 but uh, that gives me the bird mostly in focus and uh, it also allows a lot of light into the lens to make the image at the uh, high shutter speeds. You need a high shutter speed and uh, 
I am mostly using something over one sixteen hundredth of a second, and uh, I, I find uh, this lens it depends on the lens, of course, what you need and uh, and the, the light. But uh, I like as a standard to use one sixteen hundredth or higher, which means one two thousand. Fine, I seldom go over that even though I'm using Nikon D850. I noticed that uh, the sensor of the Nikon D850 needs a very high shutter speed, so a uh, 1 2000 is, is fine, but uh, I seldom can go ma very much higher than that because I'm in Iceland. We don't have a lot of lights here except for uh, 15 minutes during the middle of July. That's a joke, but uh, yeah, that's it. I have. I, I I don't think I have often used more than one two thousand, and uh, most of the time they're just fine. As for uh, frame rate, I would recommend using the highest frame rate the camera offers. Uh, the D850 I'm using today is uh, not very fast. I don't have the battery grip today uh, because, uh, well. Sometimes you just want to go slow, but uh, it can go up to nine frames a second if with the battery grip. And uh, today I'm at uh, six. When I'm using the other Nikon's, they can go higher, but uh, six, nine, whatever, just fine. But uh, higher, better. I also use uh, continuous autofocus because uh, this way I, uh, I, I can uh, let the camera follow the bird and uh, change the focusing distance. I use the back focus button. Some like to use the shutter button for uh, flying birds. I don't change that. I use the back focus button all the time. That's just what I do. I did notice when I was starting in this that uh, sometimes I felt like it was faster to use just the shutter button, but uh, after trying back and forth changing from back focus button or not and uh, the shutter release button, I didn't notice uh, any noticeable difference, so back focus button it is, for me at least. I use a single focus point when I'm uh, photographing flying puffins or group focus. There's a feature in this camera which has a, a few big focus points and uh, it's called group focus. And uh, I like it, it sometimes works, but uh, strangely enough it's no re revolution. I find the single point in the center work quite as well. but. Uh, I also sometimes try to go back and forth using uh, 9 points, 25 points, but I hardly ever used the 150 something that this camera has. So uh, maybe I'm simple minded, but that, I, that's how I do it. And uh, I was telling you, I'm just telling you how I do this. It not, it's not necessarily perfect or, or the only right thing. Make sure you notice that. But uh, that's just how I do it and uh, it's been working for me. So group focus is fine when you have these uh, fast flying birds, but when you want to be uh, more uh, precise with your focus, I like to use one point because I want to aim for the eye. And speaking about the eye of the birds, I know the new cameras are uh, offering uh, uh, crazy autofocus for wildlife. They focus on the eye for you, but uh, I think that uh, this new feature, which might, which might be revolutionary for some, is not going to help you much in, in the puffin business. I think so. But uh, why? Because the main problem with shooting puffins flying or Kilomots is that they are so fast that the main problem is keep them in the frame. And uh, 
the problem of uh, focusing on the eye or focusing on the bird is uh, of course necessary but I find when I fail it's not because the camera didn't focus it's because I failed I didn't follow the bird well enough now what else can I tell you uh, uh, regarding uh, how I try to get them in the frame that's uh, very important it's a little bit like shooting a uh, shotgun or, or a rifle when you have to follow something and uh, the technique is quite similar you try to use your whole body move the lens with the body not just your hands and uh, you follow through which means that uh, when I get the bird in the frame I follow, shoot and keep shooting and pressing the shutter button even though I've lost the puffin because uh, I like to keep the line straight and I think it's helping with uh, the keepers. And use your legs also, it's very good. I also make sure that uh, when I'm photographing puffins and I notice that they are bringing fish in which means that uh, there are young puffins in the holes. I try to stay no more than 15 minutes at uh, the same location, move around, because they have to get in the hole to feed the young chicks. So please respect that if you do this. Don't stay for too long in the same location or the same spot. I'm not always using a, a tripod or a video head like I do today for the flying birds. But uh, sometimes it's easier, especially if you have a very fl uh, fluid head which doesn't restrict your movements too much. Because holding a lens like this for long, it's not very nice because uh, yeah, you will feel it after a while. I also sometimes use uh, mono parts. They're quite good and flexible for this. And uh, of course, sometimes handheld, but uh, that means you won't last for as long in, in shooting. Uh, sometimes I use even bean bags when I can lay down and uh, uh, have a very uh, straight on approach of the birds, but usually that's not very handy not very practical in the long run, run. Now what else is on top of my mind about shooting this? Yes, uh, sometimes I pre-focus on, on a rock which is in a similar distance as I would like to start focusing on the flying bird. And uh, this means the lens has an easier uh, way to focus. It is not as difficult for the lens to focus and it's faster. Well, this concludes what's on top of my mind about shooting uh, flying birds and puffins. But uh, please subscribe if you like to and uh, check out our next video. We try to release once in a while videos about our photography. Thank you for watching.